tonight on 8 out of 10 cats, Johnny Vegas, Sarah Milliken, Example, Rachel Riley, Dr. Kristen Jessen, Tim Minchin, Jennifer Metcalf, Josh Whittaker, Mark Watson, Nick Grimshaw, and their team captain, John Richardson. And facing them tonight, Louise Spence, Louise Redmap, Russell Kane, Joey Essex, Lorraine Kelly, Vernon Kane, Joe Wilkinson, Joe Lysick, Holly Locke, and their team captain, John Locke. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy Carr. Hello and welcome to 8 out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 31% of men say they have a bucket list of things to do before they die. Number one, find out where that smoke's coming from. 12% <laughs> of British people have a friend with benefits. I've got a friend with benefits. She's on benefits. <laughs> Four out of ten workplace relationships result in marriage, and six in ten result in a written warning about the incident in the stationary car. <laughs> And almost a third of men aged between 20 and 34 live at home with their parents. The most common reasons being cost, convenience, and if you're from Norfolk, sex on tap. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panellist job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean Louise Russell, what are the nation we talking about this week? St Paul's. Yeah. St Paul's protest. Yeah. Have you been down there, Russell? No. Haven't you? It, I'm not posh enough. It's just a load of like, middle-class people going, let's have a euro of our degrees and pelts and paws. Here's a quail's egg. It's a tomato that sunblushed you mofos. Take that out of the banks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back and our gap here. Brown person, photo, back to the UK, hooray! <laughs> it does feel a little bit like that some middle-class people saw Dale Farm and, went, and yeah. thought, that looks fun. That looks so random. <laughs> I went down there. I went down there to have a look. Uh, I, I went down there to, uh, to sort of do a review for Campsite magazine. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it three stars, because I said, I said the drainage is amazing. Because, obviously, Christopher Wren knew a thing or two about it. He built it on a hill. Very good drainage there as a campsite. And <laughs> very good entertainment facilities. You've got your pubs, your sightseeing, and, of course, there's a chapel on site. <laughs> Not much for the kiddies. Not very much for the kiddies. And the toilet block is, frankly, a disgrace. <laughs> That's why the camp in New York's got like a library and media. It sounds better than my school. Yeah. <laughs> They've got a juice bar. We had dog shit on the running track. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit weird, the one in New York, because you don't actually get to see that much footage of it. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a big protest, but it's not been covered that much in the news. Do you know what I mean? No, it's it's a bit weird. they have deliberately played it down. Yeah. Well, so for something that's happening right the way around the world, but then it is, you know, it's, it's anti corporate, and a lot of TV stations are owned by. Corporations. Yeah. Oh, my well, God, thing... Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Why isn't that on the news? <laughs> <laughs> it, That's like serious it? shit, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm another go on this. Corporations are controlling what we... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the thing is, it kicks off in Tiananmen Square. <laughs> yeah, news crew, straight there. New York, Wall Street, don't hear a thing. Yeah, Weird. yeah, those Chinese have got it right. They're open <laughs> yeah. and free, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Why isn't it more like China? <laughs> China? They don't have this problem with capitalism, do they? <laughs> so they're supposed to be anti capitalism and big corporations, and they've been seen buying Coke. Not proper Coke, Coca Cola. <laughs> 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 Showbiz no, code. No, no, no. Not the kind of code we do on no, countdown. No, no. Can I have a line, please? <laughs> John, what do you think the nation should be talking about this week? The Eurozone bailout. The Eurozone bailout has been in the news a lot. Yeah, I've been trying to sort of simplify it in my head, and the way I've worked it out is the cold countries are bailing out the hot countries. That's basically it. Isn't That's exactly it. it. <laughs> Why has no one made that point before? <laughs> It's his fault. It's their fault they're in the situation. They borrowed too much money. And what do they produce? They produce flip-flops and ouzo. <laughs> <laughs> Who 
Who drinks something that sounds like a plasterer's nickname? <laughs> <laughs> Oi, Uzo! <laughs> And also, they smash all the plates at the end of the meal. No wonder they're bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> what they need, what the bloody Greeks, they need some fairy liquid and do some washing up. <laughs> yes. Well, the thing that seems to be dominating the news is the bloody Greeks. <laughs> yeah. it's the bloody Greeks, isn't it? It's the Greeks. All right, Michael Caine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in trouble because I worked it out this week. You know when you work all year to get money and then you go on holiday for two weeks? But that's where they live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're basically always on holiday. They live on holiday. Yeah. So, like, they have... <laughs> that is a very, very good point. They get through the year. <laughs> they get through the year and they go, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go for two weeks in Swindon. I'll go work in the Motorola factory. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do all the big things. I'm going to check in, I'm going to check out, I'm going to eat in the canteen. I'll tell you what, you, you come back more tired than when you went away. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't decide whether it's racist or not, but I like it. I think it's that footballer, Tevez. Am I saying his name right? Yeah. yeah. What about the footballer, well, Tevez? He... I don't... I really don't know anything about football, but I think he's You don't really need to say that twice. He's really expensive, <laughs> and he refused to go on and some big match. And there was some sort of row and you saw him being like, well, I'm not going on. If you look at Tevez, though, he's a very unfortunate-looking chap, isn't he? He does. He looks like Shrek's ugly mate, doesn't he? <laughs> I, 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 I refute that. Let's have a look. He's a great-looking guy. <laughs> In fairness to him, that was a very sunny day. <laughs> the flash is too strong. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Attention seeking, isn't he? Let's face it. If you're going to, if you're going to go to a football match and sit on the subspace, you're probably going to go on. Let's face it. You've got to do that. And then he just says no. He's obviously an attention seeker. You, you think he's an attention seeker? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's obviously an attention seeker. <laughs> the most attention-seeking sort of thing I've ever bloody seen. <laughs> Jennifer, do you, know any, do you know any footballers? No, I don't really watch it. You don't really watch it? I knew one once. I read you knew one you once? Who did, you, who did you know once? Ooh, we don't talk about him. <laughs> Hollyoaks was like, uh, I always thought Hollyoaks was like a shopping channel for footballers. <laughs> What's the other most important moment in life? People do babies, don't they? <laughs> you made it sound people... like litter. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only reason I want to have kids is so I can look at other people's without being accused of being a paedophile. <laughs> <laughs> when you walk past a... <laughs> I don't mean in that word. No, no, mean... dig yourself out of this. I'd love to see this. <laughs> he's got a shovel. On he's on, the, he's on, the, on your marks, John, <laughs> and dig your way out of that one. Sometimes you're walking past a playground. Sure. <laughs> You start. He's, even, he's going deeper before he even starts the day. <laughs> Sometimes you're walking past a playground and you just want to be able to watch the abandon of children. <laughs> it's, it's like watching nature. It's like when you watch the leaves change in autumn. Sometimes you want to watch a kid on a swing and think, oh, I used to be on swings before I had jobs and before people judged me and before I wasn't allowed to be in a park. And then before, <laughs> before you know it, you've been there half an hour and someone says, oh, which one's yours? You go, oh, I'll go then. Fine. I'm not. <laughs> It's a nice... And sometimes you a baby say, will look at you. What you should say is I haven't chosen yet. <laughs> X Factor? Have you been talking about X Factor? What's been going on in X Factor? Tell me well, everything. There's been the, the bullying with yeah. Misha and whoever else she was doing it with. It's Misha B, isn't it? Yeah, Misha B, you get She's... me. You... <laughs> I love Misha B, though. You love Misha like, B? But... Yeah, I don't think it was bullying. I think it was just showbiz banter. She was meant to be bullying Sammy. Sammy, uh, the, Yeah, but um... Sammy said she wasn't. Sammy said, look, I'm six foot two, 20 stone. And who said, said this? Sammy. Could and... you say that again, please? Yeah, S Sammy. 
sorry, who was it? <laughs> well, if you want me to spit at you, I said Sammy. I said Sammy, Sammy, Sammy. I don't think that we're talking about bullying as I do this. <laughs> Sammy, Sammy. I, I should just say, because I was teasing you a little bit yeah. there, if you're being bullied because you've got a speech impediment, there are people you can talk to. <laughs> <laughs> but it will take fucking ages and they may be... <laughs> oh, they're all rubbish. They're so... The, the, the Misha girls are right. Sammy now. I, I'm still going to sing for the... I bet you are. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> Simon Cow being on it, he really, he was horrible, and I liked that. Because <laughs> he knew that crushing people's dreams made good telly. Yeah. <laughs> and I think he should have his own show called Crushing People's Dreams. <laughs> people bad news, like... <laughs> Fortunately, your shed broken into... <laughs> you know, stuff like that. <laughs> That's yeah. not actually a dream, is it? <laughs> That gives you a terrifying glimpse into Joe's life there, that he's gone, my dream of my shed not being broken into. Yeah, nice. Joe's dream is to have an unbroken into shed. shed four yeah. times. Four times. Yeah. Really? Breaks your heart. <laughs> I have to keep me spayed in the hallway. I imagine that for a man with your facial appearance, having a spade in the hallway doesn't frighten guests at all. <laughs> really. I thought it was completely laughable that Alexandra Burke as a guest judge on there. That's like having... Stevie Wonder judging Miss World, isn't it? It's like... <laughs> but that's what happens with show business, isn't it? I mean, before someone goes out, you say to them, you know, do I look nice if you're in... You can pet... Can pe I'll get the... <laughs> <laughs> I've just got a new pepper now, I've got a stutter as well. Now Sean's got to get tested. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your team to go first. What do you think the nation have been talking about this week? Um, the Italian Prime Minister, Silvio Berlusconi. Michael uh, Jackson. What, sorry? Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, let's stick on one thing, shall we, for a minute? <laughs> Sean, Sean had a guess there, and he was, he was probably right, wasn't oh, he? Okay. So let's... <laughs> we can talk about Michael Jackson if you want. I'm happy to do that if you want Michael Jackson to be our answer. Well, you, what do you think the nation have been talking about, Joey Essex? Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> What have you been saying about Michael Jackson this week? I don't know. I don't know whether it's true about them, like, you know, you know about the whole thing where did he... did the doctor mean to kill him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you think? I don't know. Well, it's been... <laughs> well, it's been fascinating talking to you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, is it the trial of uh, Michael Jackson's doctor? Family suspect foul play, and it, it just, you know. Well, there was but, a delay, wasn't there, in resuscitation, giving him the kiss of life, because they had to, it took them ages to find an eight year old paramedic. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I suppose that's it, because you have to hold the nose while you, while you breathe into the mouth, don't you? So, yeah. that, obviously, you don't want right, okay, well. <laughs> I was thinking, before he died, his whole life must have flashed before his eyes. And his last thoughts must be, who's that little black kid singing my song? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't the question of guilt about whether uh, he, was, he, was, he was really paying attention to Michael, to Jack Jackson? And he'd given him the propofol, and then he went downstairs to another room, and he had a baby listener. That's what I found. That's the really spooky thing about it. And he must have been sitting there, like, watching Downton Abbey or whatever, <laughs> and he could just hear Michael Jackson going... Can I have some milk? <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I have some more milk? <laughs> and he'd be going, Michael, go to bed! <laughs> if I have to come up there, <laughs> you won't be going on that holiday to the O2. <laughs> <laughs> That's some more milk! <laughs> I've got a rumour that he's actually still alive. Yeah, Joey. Yeah. <laughs> he's still... That's what I've heard. Is he still alive? He's on some random, like, desert island somewhere, just... Well, yeah. He's on a random That's desert... That's not a rumour. Yeah. That's a load of bollocks. Fingers <laughs> <laughs> on buzzers, one more thing to get. 
Uh, Justin Bieber's meant to have fathered a child. Yeah, but it's, it's extraordinary because Justin Bieber's only he's only, only four. Uh, he's so only seventeen. Yeah. <laughs> he's the first. It's why it's in the papers. He's the first four-year-old even to be allowed to have a baby. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's, he's seventeen <laughs> years of age, but apparently he's had a. <laughs> Why have we stopped it? Love is that it. one of his songs? Is that one of his songs? I genuinely didn't know anything he'd done. I didn't know you could get... Because they, they keep describing it as a rump. Yeah. Which makes me a bit jealous, because I don't think I've ever romped. <laughs> I think I frolicked once, but I'm not sure. <laughs> but it's, as apparently it was a 30-second romp, <laughs> and you certainly can't have... That's like having a 12-course snack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you, 15 seconds of that was probably untucking his vest from his Spider-Man pants. <laughs> <laughs> This is the, I mean, <laughs> uh, Justin Bieber strenuously denies the allegations, but... How do you strenuously uh, go, No! <laughs> 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 no! I, I didn't! <laughs> he probably doesn't even know he did it. With that hair, you know his hair, it's like a sheepdog, isn't it? <laughs> he probably thought he went for a really comfy <laughs> piss. <laughs> Two eight out of ten cats. Our next round is pick of the polls. Sean, Louise, Russell, pick a question. The man with his thumbs up. This is your related yeah. question. Most people think children today are given too much praise. Mm. True or false? <laughs> My dad, he was quite interesting. He would give you some encouragement if, you know, on certain things. Like, he used to yeah. play that game. You know that game, Spine in a Sack? We used to play that. Do you ever play that? Spine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, spine. You ever play that when you were a kid? Spine in a sack. Spine, spine in a sack. Spine in a sack. <laughs> it sounds more like what a he do? Injury. What he'd do is he'd go out and get some roadkill. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'd get a roadkill and he'd whip the spine out, get the old no. spine out, then he'd break up all the vertebrae, put it in a sack, then he'd bounce it on our heads, right? And we'd have to guess what animal it was. <laughs> oh! Spine in a sack. Spine in a Spine sack. In a sack. Yeah. I mean, you probably called it something different, back in a bag or something. <laughs> Whatever, it's the same game. <laughs> I go, I go, oh, is it chipmunk, Dad? And you go, don't be stupid, that's not even indigenous. <laughs> How am I going to find that on a road? <laughs> harder, Sean, work harder! <laughs> I go... you guys winding up? Is there really a <laughs> Sean, you never really talk about your softer you side and being in love. Mm. And I think I speak on behalf of everyone. I'd like to just, I'd like to see a bit of the real you. Yes. yes. When did you fall in love, Sean? Well, I always find that the confusing thing about falling in love is the symptoms of falling in love, a sort of lightheadedness, giddiness, are very similar to the symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure whether I'm in love or the flu's blocked. <laughs> <laughs> John, have you ever been in love? The first two people I fell in love with... Two? Had <laughs> 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 your best. Different occasions, both ended with their partners telling me to stop phoning their house. <laughs> <laughs> the first one was a clown, uh, who I fell in love with when I was about eight. He opened a shopping centre near me, and I was transfixed. <laughs> this guy could juggle, he could do magic, he had poems. <laughs> And how old were you? Clown must have been in his late 20s, early 30s. <laughs> and maybe nine or ten. <laughs> I asked for a picture. <laughs> He's given me his card. It's only got his phone number on it. <laughs> he obviously wants me to call. <laughs> I left a few messages. Uh, <laughs> and one day when I phoned up, his wife picked up that bitch. This sounds like an implausible story that the clown told the police. Like, no, he was calling me. <laughs> <laughs> Most men are too embarrassed to undergo beauty treatments. True or false? Well, you've undergone a few. Or is that a natural tan? This is natural. Oh. Is That's fine? a natural tan, is it? Uh, I've had sunbeds, but I've quit sunbeds now. I don't have no sunbeds no more, so... You've quit sunbeds? Quit. My <laughs> God, oh. you've made some sacrifices, <laughs> haven't you? <laughs> no. When did you quit sunbeds? Like last week. <laughs> Jennifer, you're, you're a lady. Now, do you think men are too pampered these days? Do we do, we do yeah, too much? Yeah, yeah, I do. I like men, like, hairy, smelly. Um, the confines... Johnny Vegas! <laughs> 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 
So, uh, what's your daily regime, beauty-wise? What do you do, beauty-wise? Obviously, you know, I wake up, look at myself, and I think, green. But then I get, then what? Then I, then, <laughs> then, then I get in, I get in the shower, do my air afterwards, bang, bang. What are you saying? <laughs> Bang, bang, and who's over there? That was meant to be the mirror. Oh, I thought that was your carer. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here's your first one. Top way to boost your self-confidence. Go on. Uh, I had a joint birthday party with someone with less friends than me. <laughs> I've never felt so high in my life. John, how did you feel about that? <laughs> Best way to patronise someone? Is it to ask them if they know what patronise means? <laughs> what do you think? Because do do people often think doctors are a little bit patronising. Yeah. <laughs> she just did it very, very good. good. Very good. He nailed that. <laughs> Top reason people are jealous of their friends? Um, I've got a mate who works at a Marmite factory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's always a talk of the town, so... Yeah. Yeah. Some people love him, some people... Yeah. <laughs> no, we all love him. <laughs> <laughs> Most useful thing your parents teach you? Cooking, cleaning, sewing. That's what Money. I learned from my dad. <laughs> My mum taught me how to make jokes based on stereotypical perceptions of gender. <laughs> <laughs> is it, uh... <laughs> that is good, though, isn't it? Well, most annoying habit. It's the thing you do. I can't stand it. <laughs> that thing you do, you do like a little skip, you go, and then you go. <laughs> <laughs> If you walk from there to there, you've got to then turn round. Look, you just do that. Well, how would you? How would you do it? You just How would you do it? Right, let's see. Not easy, Sean. Yeah, okay. All right, Sean Lock, everyone. Sean Lock. You don't do this. What is your problem? tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show. Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night.